jambo jambo bwana habari gani nzuri sana wageni wageni wakaribishwa kilimanjaro hakuna matata na kesho ni kibo hakuna matata Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Sam. This is the third video as part of my Climbing Kilimanjaro series and today we're going to look at what you need to pack. If you missed my first two videos in this series then go check them out now. They cover our ascent to the summit and our descent back down to the gate and I try to cover everything that you might want to know as part of the journey. Everything from the food to the climate to the sleeping arrangements everything. So here's a list of all of the things we'll be covering in this video in as much depth as I possibly can so that you won't forget anything. But for now let us begin and I'm gonna get started with what bags to take. So here I have a 90 litre duffel bag and I have a 35 litre backpack and I'm actually gonna get started with talking about the duffel bag. So this bag here has carry straps and it also came with shoulder straps but I took mine off. Your porters will not use it on their backs, they will carry it on their heads, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so this is a 90 litre size and for me this was absolutely perfect but what I would recommend if you are hiring a sleeping bag upon arrival is that you only fill your duffel bag halfway. If you're taking your sleeping bag then you know exactly how much room you've got but the sleeping bags that you will hire are humongous. So I filled my duffel bag before I even got to Kilimanjaro and when I got there and they gave me my sleeping bag, the sleeping bag filled half of my 90 litre duffel bag and that was as small as I could get it. That was all of my weight trying to squish it and I couldn't get it any smaller than half. So just keep that in mind. Now before I move on to the backpack I do just want to mention two final points that you need to get to go with your duffel bag when traveling. And the first one is a padlock and secondly get yourself a name tag with your contact details, address, etc. These two things were the most important things things because our duffel bags and our luggage actually went missing during our changeover flights and to claim your luggage back they will ask you what your bag looks like if you can identify it with your name tag perfect and you also want to know that it's going to be secure because you do have to fill a form in with all of the contents and value of your bag so it's just that extra peace of mind having a lock on it next up is the backpack. This is a 35 litre backpack and this was the perfect size. I would look for something that's around this size. You could possibly do less, I wouldn't go with more than 35 litres, but I would say something around this size is perfect. So this bag comes with waist straps and chest straps for extra support and I would highly, highly recommend that you get a backpack that has these things. Having the weight distributed across your core makes a huge difference. Now this bag also comes with a waterproof cover and this again is something extremely important in a backpack. If it rains, nothing dries on the mountains so make everything as dry as you possibly can. This is sewn into my bag so I can't lose it. If your backpack of choice doesn't have a cover then buy one. If your backpack gets wet it will not dry for the entirety of your trip and you do not want to be carrying around a heavy soggy backpack. So this backpack does also have quite a few handy pockets. It has two side pockets here. It has a big front pocket just here which is where I kept my poles or you can also put them through the loops just here. I kept mine in there because it stopped them dangling a little bit too low. I also kept in this front pocket a little bottle of hand sanitizer and some tissue because if you go to the toilet you might want to sanitize your hands afterwards and you don't want to be touching all your buttons and zips and everything else so something like this was really really handy. I also had some zip pockets here and another great pocket that this backpack came with was inside a huge pouch at the back for storing your water bladder. It also has a little hole just on the side for passing your straw through. So they're your main bags. Next up, dry bags. 
So I actually took 14 dry bags with me and as you can see they're all different colours and different sizes. You probably don't need to take this many, you could probably get away with taking two very large bags. But for me this worked because it really helped me to know where to find each thing that I needed. I also labelled each of my bags so I knew what was in them. So I would just run through what I put in each of these bags and how it helped me to get my things sorted. So I had these two bags for my thermal tops and my thermal bottoms. This was about the right size because they're quite thin and I rolled them all up and they were perfect. This bag was for my underwear. I had socks, pants and sports bras in this. So keeping in the theme of packing clothes, this big bag just here contained all of my really thick winter gear for when I made it up to the summit. So in this I would have had my big thick coat, my salad pets, my big thick gloves, that kind of thing. This little dry bag I used as a day accessories bag and this stayed in my backpack for the entirety of the trip. The contents of it would change with each day. So as it was sunny near the bottom I would have my sun hat, my sunglasses in here. As it got colder I'd have my gloves or my woolly hat in here. It just made everything a lot easier to find. I mean if you've tried finding an odd glove in your backpack when your hands are cold and it's right at the bottom you'll know what I'm talking about. This is a lifesaver for just putting all the little bits that you might need throughout the day and give yourself a fairly big bag for laundry. All of your dirty clothes that you don't want to be getting mixed up with all your fresh stuff shove it all in a bag. And finally, in terms of clothing, I had one more dry sack and this stayed in my backpack the whole time. And this was for layering, de-layering. So this was everything I thought I might need to wear in the day that I didn't want to put in my duffel bag. So for example, I would have my fleece or my down jacket in here if I thought it was going to rain. I also kept in this bag a layer of waterproofs at all times, waterproof trousers and a thin waterproof jacket. Next up, I have two bags here for tech and gadgets. I had one bag for my camera stuff, my camera, my batteries, my SD cards, things that I would be using during the day. This bag stayed in my duffel bag and this had other gadgets in, for example, my head torch, my power bank, things that I wouldn't need during the day but I would when I got to camp. This bag I had as a toiletries bag. This was about the right size. I will talk about all of the toiletries that I packed a little bit later on in this video. Next up, a first aid bag. This was the only orange bag that I had and to know which bag was my first aid bag immediately to look at was really really helpful and I would advise that. This bigger bag was my food bag and this is probably the biggest waste of time of all. <laughs> I'm a really fussy eater and dreaded eating on the mountain because I have dietary requirements. I'm also a really, really fussy eater naturally. So I packed a load of ration packs, biscuits, Mars bars, didn't eat a single thing. In fact, I think I ate a couple of my ginger biscuits and that's about it. <laughs> the food on the mountain was amazing. So I ended up carrying a big bag of food the entire time and didn't use it. But one thing I would recommend taking though is ginger biscuits because ginger is very good at settling your stomach if you are unwell. Next up I had this bag as my night bag. This would have things like my earplugs, my eye mask, my bed socks, things like that. And again this was the only bag of this colour in my whole kit so I knew exactly where all my night stuff was as soon as I got into my tent. Because the tents aren't very big and you don't want to be emptying your bag everywhere to try and find the thing that you're looking for. So if you can get to know the colours of your categories then that would be a big help. And finally I had a dry bag for my journal and my letters from home. You don't want them getting wet during your journey up the mountain so dry bag! And finally, I just want to raise the three other bags that I took with me. I took a cotton tote bag for my boots. When you get to camp and you take your boots off, put them somewhere where they're not going to dirty up the rest of your clothes or the rest of your items. This little bag here didn't come up the mountain with me, but this stayed at the hotel with the things that I didn't want to take up with me. I didn't leave that much at the hotel, so this was about the right size. And finally, I also took this handy travel wallet. So this has a section for your passport, it's got a pen, all of your travel cards, don't forget your vaccination certificates if you need them. It also has a section for currency, documents. I take this travelling everywhere I go and I swear by it. 
Alrighty, so let's get cracking on the clothing that I packed. Beginning with tops. Over here, we have a t-shirt. This is just a plain cotton t-shirt, which might look to you like a great idea. Upon reflection, it ended up being very, very clammy and clingy when it got hot. I would look for something that's more active wear, gym wear, sweat wicking. I only packed one t-shirt because I thought I'd end up being quite cold on the mountain. And I ended up wearing that t-shirt for about five days. By the end of the trip, it was very smelly and disgusting. I would definitely recommend packing two t-shirts. I did also take a thermal vest top. I did only wear this once and I only wore that on summit night. These thermal long sleeve tops, they were perfect to be honest. They're very thin, very stretchy, they're breathable and lightweight, but they also just keep the sun off you, they keep the wind off you, they keep you warm when you need to be warm. Next up in terms of thickness, I had a shell jacket. Again, this is really quite thin. I wore this usually just over my t-shirt when I just needed to take the chill off my arms. You want something that you can unzip and zip up because temperature changes really quite a lot in the mountain. Sometimes you'll just want to unzip, you won't want to take the whole thing off. So definitely get a shell jacket with a zip and nothing that's too thick either. In terms of a thicker layer, you will want something extra. And for that, I had a fleece. It's not too thick, but it was just enough to keep me warm. Again, this has a zip on the neckline so I could just cool off my chest. It also has a high collar, which I would recommend because sometimes the wind or the sun on your neck is not pleasant. Moving on from the fleece, we go into the coat section, starting with my down jacket. I loved my down jacket. It's not too heavy. It's not too thick. It's super breathable. It's not super waterproof, but I had other layers to protect me from the rain if needed. So this one was great. It has a hood. It has tightening cords. It has zip pockets and also a zip pocket on the inside so I could keep my phone warm. I also took a very thin waterproof coat. You just want something extremely, extremely thin like this. You can roll it right up into an elastic band and you're really not going to notice that it's even in your bag at all. And you're going to keep this in your bag at all times because it might rain and you could get very, very wet. So just having a very thin waterproof layer is perfect. For summit night, I had a very thick waterproof coat. This one just here was perfect. Absolutely weatherproof, windproof, waterproof, you name it. You could tighten the sleeves around your gloves to keep the heat in. You could tighten the hood around your face. It had inside pockets, zip pockets, everything. It's also quilted on the inside for extra heat. I only wore this once and that was on summit night. The rest of the time it stayed in my duffel bag. So on summit night, I wore a thermal vest, two long sleeve thermal tops. I either wore the shell jacket or the fleece. I can't remember which. My down jacket and also my big thick waterproof. And there were times when I had to take layers off nearer the bottom, but it was absolutely perfect for at the top. So let's move on to bottoms. Okay, so in terms of bottoms, I packed three lots of thermal leggings, one pair of very, very thermal fleece lined leggings. I had a pair of walking trousers, a thin pair of waterproof trousers and a thick, thick pair of waterproof salopettes. These three pairs of thermal leggings, I wore every pair. For me, it was the perfect amount. Some people in the group only took two pairs and they were fine. You want something that's gonna be full length to protect you from bug bites and also vegetation around the ankles. I didn't take any shorts. I just wore leggings even on the sunny days and I was fine. But the thermal side of them also allows you to keep warm when it starts to get cooler. As we climbed higher, these fleece-lined leggings were an absolute godsend. I did sleep in these for quite a few nights actually because they were perfect in the nighttime temperatures. These are super furry inside, super comfortable. I love these leggings. But when you're just at camp in the higher altitudes and it's just that little bit nippy in the evenings and in the mornings, these leggings are absolutely wonderful and they just keep you warm and they trap the heat without making you really too heart or Moving on to my hiking trousers, I actually only wore these twice and that was either side of summit night. For me they were just that bit too thick 
thick for, for the temperatures. I think these leggings were far more flexible and breathable. These felt a little bit more restricting, but they did come with their benefits. For example, the zips on the thighs, allowing your legs to breathe and to let some heat out. They also have zips on the ankles so you can open them up around your boots a little bit more. And they also had zip pockets at the front so you could keep your phone or any rubbish or anything like that in as well. But for me, they were just that little bit too thick and a little bit too tight for most of the trek. I found the leggings far more comfortable and I wore them more or less every day of the trip. Again, like with the coats, keep a layer of thin, thin, thin waterproof trousers in your bags at all times. Get something that's maybe even just that little bit baggy on you so you can just pull them over your boots without having to take off any layers or take off your boots if it does start raining. My salad pets I only wore once and that was on summit night. These are very thick. They are fleece lined inside. They are actually double layered. So they have the insulating outer layer, which is waterproof and they also have another waterproof layer on the inside just for extra protection. These trousers did also come with detachable braces. I did take off the braces because I didn't want anything irritating my back whilst I was carrying my backpack on summit night and they stayed up perfectly fine. Just like the thin waterproof trousers, I would recommend rolling these up and putting an elastic band around them just to keep them as compact as you can because they are pretty hefty and pretty beefy trousers. <laughs> Okay, next up, underwear. And I shall begin with what socks I packed. So I managed to pick up some of these blister proof socks and I actually had four pairs of these. I donated two of the other pairs to the porters. I wore these for the majority of my trek and they were super comfortable. I didn't get any blisters whatsoever. My shoes for me were really comfortable and I wore them quite a bit before the trip so I knew they weren't going to rub me. But these blister proof socks are quite thick and they kept my feet very, very warm and very comfortable and padded. And I did also take a couple of pairs of thin, comfortable socks. So these just came above the ankle. And if my feet swell, they're not gonna be uncomfortable in the heat. I also took just a comfy pair of trainer socks. I wear these all the time at home. You want something like this for when you're around camp and you just wanna put your trainers on or a fresh pair of socks just for the evening. I also took a long pair of ski socks. So these are quite thick, they're very long. These were actually perfect for summit night. I wore a thick pair of socks and a thin pair of socks. Didn't need anything else. I also took a big, big, big fluffy pair of bed socks. These were a dream, especially in your sleeping bag at night. I would definitely recommend a big, big, fluffy, nice pair of socks for sleeping in. I took nine pairs of socks with me and it was just the right number. I wore every pair of socks that I had. In terms of pants, I took a pair for every day that I was there and also an extra pair should I have needed them. I probably recommend taking a few pairs of what you normally wear, comfortable kind of pants. I maybe even recommend taking a pair of boxer style shorts just for extra warmth. Ladies in particular, I also took with me about five or six pairs of period pants and they were actually probably the best thing that I took. They're super absorbent, which is great for all of the wild wheeze that you will be doing. And should you come on whilst you're trekking, you don't need to worry about anything because your pants will just sort you out. And it saves you having to use tampons and pads and having to dispose of them or carry them, whatever. And finally, in terms of bras. These ones have a real flat, thin, stretchy back, which was great because I didn't want anything interfering with my backpack. I took three, I traveled in one and packed two, and it was about the right amount. I think a couple of the other ladies in the group only took two, but definitely get yourself something with a flat back that's stretchy, breathable, and isn't gonna interfere with your backpack straps or the bit against your back. Next up is footwear. So I took two sets of footwear. I took 
comfortable trainers and I took my hiking boots. My biggest tip to you is if you aren't traveling in your hiking boots, if you're traveling in your trainers, then keep your hiking boots in your hand luggage. So as I mentioned earlier, our luggage went missing and I was wise enough to have kept my boots in my hand luggage. So when we got to Kilimanjaro, I still had my boots. Should we have needed to climb up the mountain in what we were wearing? You don't really want to be hiring boots when you get there because they might rub you, they might not be the best fit. Get yourself a comfy pair of hiking boots quite a while before you go on your trek and break them in. You get them as comfortable as possible. These did me wonderfully. They didn't hurt me whatsoever. I didn't get any blisters and I wore them for a few months before the trip. Also take with you a pair of trainers. Travel in them if you want to or you can travel in your hiking boots and bring these with you. But when you get to each of your camps, you're gonna want to take your boots off and putting on a nice comfortable pair of trainers is the best feeling. Take something that's comfortable, trusty and you don't mind getting a little bit dirty. One of the other ladies in our group also took kind of a hiking boot trainer crossover for the descent. She found the descent a lot easier than I found it in my hiking boots. I think she had a little bit more bounce in the sole and a bit more support around the toes. These were quite hard when you're coming down onto the balls of your foot on the descent for several hours. I probably would have found it more, more comfortable descending in my trainers, but the terrain is still a little bit all over the place, so the hiking boots are definitely a must. Finally, one thing that I don't have here because I donated them to the porters before I left is a pair of gaiters. So gaiters just protect your boots and your trousers from all of the dirt and I didn't really notice the benefit of gaiters at any point on the track other than in the alpine desert and the alpine desert was very very dusty and mucky. There's nothing worse than when you need to take your boot off and shake it from all the dust that's in it so gaiters will stop that from happening. Accessories. So here I have hats, sunglasses, snoods and gloves. I took two hats and I took a sun hat. With your sun hat you are going to need something with a brim. A cap isn't really ideal because you will be getting the sun on the back of your neck and the tips of your ears all day long and the amount of people in our group that had burnt necks was unreal. So you're gonna want either a bucket hat or a sun hat, something with a brim that is gonna keep the sun off of your neck, your ears and your face. In terms of a woolly hat, this isn't the hat that I wore on on the mountain I did donate my hat but it was almost exactly the same as this minus the bobble you're gonna want something without a bobble because if you're gonna put your hood up this is gonna get in the way you will also need a snood so this has a, a fleece lining on the inside I think I only wore this on summit night a pair of sunglasses now I read everywhere that you would need category 3 or category 4 sunglasses for climbing Killy these are category 3 but I really don't think it matters. These were quite dark in some points of the trek so I wouldn't worry too much about what category lens you get. My only tip in terms of buying sunglasses is if you can buy a pair that wrap around your face you'll really really appreciate them. Gloves. I took two pairs with me. I took a thin pair and I also took a very thick thermal pair. This thick thermal pair I only wore once and that was on summit night with the thin gloves underneath inside of them. Make sure to pick up something with adjustable wrist straps so you can tighten them around your wrists and keep the heat in. This thin pair was absolutely perfect for the majority of the trek. They've got good grip on the inside so if you're walking with poles these are really really helpful. These thin gloves also come with a little clip so you can attach them together and I hooked them over my backpack for when I needed to take them off or on. If you're gonna take anything away from this wear protection on your hands if not sun cream then wear gloves for every day of your trek. I ended up with really burnt hands at one point from wind chill blains and also the sun. It's very painful. <laughs> gear and equipment. Some of the gear that I used isn't here for me to show you because I donated it to the porters but I will talk you through everything that I took starting with my water bladder. This I think is a three litre pack and that was absolutely perfect. Some of the other ladies in the group took 
2 litres or 2.5 litres. I sometimes had some left in this when I got to camp, but it didn't feel at any point like a burden. It's probably better to have too much than not enough. And this one here is also a thermal bladder, as you can see from the straw and the pack that it's in. It still froze on summit night, but it did keep it from getting warm when the sun was out and that was a real blessing. <laughs> I also took a water bottle with me. Now even though you'll be drinking most of your water through your bladder, you'll want something for in the evenings when you get to camp because you don't want to be heaving your bladder around with you to the dinner table. So I picked up a water to go bottle which actually has a purification filter built into it. Honestly I didn't have purification in my bladder and the water in that was absolutely fine. This is a 60 centiliter bottle and that was probably just the right size. You don't want something too big because you're really not going to be using it that much. You're only going to be using it at camp. In terms of other gear, I also had a head torch which I used around the camp at night and also on summit night. I donated my head torch to the porters so I don't have it here but I do have the batteries because you're going to need to take some spare batteries with you in case the battery dies. The head torch you will want to get, you will want something very strong and something that will last you about eight hours. My head torch lasted almost the entire time. I changed the batteries once and that was after summit night. Another thing I don't have here to show you is my walking poles because again, I donated them. Definitely pick up a set of carbon walking poles. They will just help you up the mountains. And finally, I have hand warmers. Now, I didn't use these at all. They're still wrapped up from the trip and nor did quite a few people in our group. Our gloves were more than enough. A few of the ladies in our group did use foot warmers on summit night. And if you're going to use foot warmers, then I do recommend that you trial them before going on the trip because a lot of the ladies that did wear the foot warmers ended up with quite bad blisters on the soles of their feet because they got too hot. We'll be walking on them for eight to 12 hours. And if they're piping hot, you're not really gonna want to take your boots off on the side of a mountain at midnight in minus 20. So these items here are what I would probably call classify as nighttime gear. So we have the sleeping bag liner. I don't know if these are wholly necessary, but I do think on the cold nights this definitely trapped the heat and was just that little bit more insulating. On the same note, in terms of keeping the heat in at night, I can't recommend enough that you bring a hot water bottle. So this one here is really quite small. It's about the size of my hand. You can fold it up and squish it so it's really easy to carry and it weighs nothing. We gave these to the porters in the evening, they would fill them up and then we put them in our sleeping bags and allow them to just heat our sleeping bags whilst we ate dinner. And by the time you get into bed, it's a dream. It's so nice and toasty and it stays warm through to the morning as well. And the mornings can be quite chilly too. So I would definitely recommend one of these. Now for that extra bit of luxury, I would actually probably recommend that you bring a pillowcase at night. I filled it with all of my quilted fleecy legs like my down jacket, my fleeces, my shell jacket and I had something to rest my head on and sleep on because you don't have any head support in your sleeping bag and you don't really want to be sleeping on your duffel bag because it's so hard and tough. You don't need it because you can just sleep on your jacket but for me it was just a little extra luxury. It also smells like home. You will want to take some sleeping aids because night times can be quite noisy and with summit night requiring you to sleep sleep in an afternoon, having an eye mask is a real blessing. So I would recommend some earplugs and an eye mask just to help you sleep. Alrighty, technology. And I shall begin with the phone charger. Now I would recommend not just taking an all-in-one plug, I would take a USB plug and a USB lead because if you want to use your phone on the mountain, then a USB lead is what you will need to charge your phone with your power bank. I left my plug at the hotel while I went up the mountain and I took with me my lead. I would also recommend getting a lead with several different types of charging head. For me, I use this one for my phone, this type charge my battery 
battery charger. So I only had to take one lead and I could charge various things with it. The plugs that they use in Tanzania are the British standard plug. So it's this three pronged plug just here. Take an adapter if you need one. Now in terms of camera accessories, I took with me my GoPro and I also took with me what I'm filming on right now, which is my Sony A6500. I did take a chest strap for my GoPro. I put this on on summit night and then took it straight off <laughs> because it was very restricting on my chest and digging into my back where my backpack was. You really don't have a great deal of air on the summit climb so as much as it would have been wonderful to just have my GoPro on my chest and not have to worry about it, I probably wouldn't recommend having a chest strap just because of how much it does restrict how much you need to breathe. And one thing that I did forget to put down is camera lenses. I took two camera lenses with me. I took my 30mm f1.4 and also my kit lens, which I'm using right now. This lens takes some really beautiful portrait shots and I thought I would be using it for nice portrait shots a lot more than I actually did. The normal kit lens was just so much better at picking up the scenery and also our entire group because you're walking very, very close to people the whole time. And this lens was just a little bit close up for using it in a lot of the scenarios during our trek. So I did get some amazing pictures using it. Did I need to take it? Probably Probably not. I didn't use it really very much at all. I probably could have got away with the smaller, lighter, easier to carry kit lens. For my Sony, I took five batteries with me and I also took a charger so that I could recharge my batteries as and when I needed to. And this was just a USB charger which went straight into my power bank. I use my camera all day, every day during the trek and I went through all five batteries and I think I charged all five batteries twice. I kept my batteries with me during the day inside my clothing to keep them warm, especially at night, keep them inside your sleeping bag to keep them warm or they will drain a lot faster. I also took a little water wallet of SD cards. I can't remember how many SD cards I took with me, maybe six or something like that, but they were all quite high memory. And I also put some little stickers on my SD card slots in advance so that when I used a memory card and it was full, I could put it into one of the, the sticker slots and I knew that those ones were full. So if I needed to get a card for my camera at any point, I knew which ones were empty and which ones were full. Now this little mini tripod here, I didn't actually take mine with me, but my friend brought hers and we actually got some really, really gorgeous long exposure shots of the night sky or the sunrise, that kind of thing. If you're into photography, then it's a suggestion but it's really not necessary you can hold it against a rock and it would do the job don't forget a power bank this is 20,000 amps is that what they're measured in I don't know what they're measured in this lasted the entirety of my trip right down to the last day which I think was maybe eight days worth of power but I managed to get two charges of five batteries I also managed to charge my phone and I don't think I actually needed to charge my GoPro because I didn't use it very much but I got a lot of use out of my power bank if you are an avid music lover don't forget your headphones I took them and I didn't use them at all I thought I would at night time you spend a lot of time just in the communal tent chatting and then you go to bed toiletries so I kept all of my toiletries in a clear bag I probably didn't need to because I kept them all in a dry bag anyway but it did just keep everything together in one place I also took a little bag but this was primarily just for the airport for carrying my liquids through security I did keep it in my bag during the trek in case anything leaked so good to have but you're not allowed a single use plastic in Tanzania so you have to carry something with a purpose whether it's hygiene reasons or whatever in terms of hygiene 
wet wipes will become your best friend. I took with me a microfiber towel, well it's more a very small cloth. I use this just for drying off rather than using it to wash with because if anything gets wet on the mountain it just does not dry. Continuing with hygiene, a roll-on deodorant is probably your best bet rather than a spray, it's just easier to carry. Then we have your toothpaste, toothbrush and I'd also recommend taking floss or a dental stick. The meals can be quite meat heavy. They do fantastic vegetarian options as well. Shampoo, conditioner and shower gel. I left these at the hotel. I didn't take them on the mountain. Obviously there's nowhere to wash. I also took some earbuds. Again, I didn't use them. I think I used one. But what I did use was tissues because you breathe in so much mucky, dusty air that you will be blowing out very, very mucky stuff. So make sure you clear your nose. I did also take a full loo roll, didn't use that at all. Our camps had port loos and each of those port loos came with loo rolls so there was no shortage of it. But if your trek doesn't come with port loos you might want to consider taking some loo roll. The camp toilets didn't look the best. So I'd recommend going with the portaloo option if you have that option. Sanitary products. The altitude can have an impact on your menstrual cycle and can screw things up a little bit. So definitely take some as a plan B. I did come on on the mountain. I had period pants though and they were the best thing. I didn't even use any of my sanitary products because you do then obviously have the issue of having to carry dirty products and where do you put them? What do you do with them? That kind of thing. So my period pants were, were absolutely great just put them in my dirty laundry and I didn't have to worry about them but they're good to have should you need backup and don't forget that two things I cannot 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 stress enough you need sun cream and the highest protection of sun cream that you can get so SPF 50 UV rating five stars you need the strongest level of protection I took my gloves off for about half an hour as we were walking and I ended up with really painful burns from wind chillblain and also from the sun and similarly with lip cream and lip balm if you could get an SPF rated lip balm you're going to be saving yourself a lot of pain so many of our group had split lips and everything like that so keep these with you throughout the day reapply them as much as you can bug spray I got bit quite a lot on our trip you will need this uh, some of the ladies in our group had a roll-on formula which I actually preferred to the spray in terms of hair I took a little brush like this with a mirror in it I kept my hair in plaits for the entire trip but the mirror is good to have if you have something in your eye or something like that. You will also want to have bobbles and hair clips should you need them. I went with five bobbles and I came back with one <laughs> because all the ladies wanted to tie their hair up as well when they were there so definitely definitely wear your hair out of your face. It'll just save you a lot of grief. And finally a nail kit. If you break a nail you'll want to file it otherwise it will drive you mad. And also keep your toenails short especially Especially for summit and descent your feet will be hitting the front of your boots quite drastically on your way down and you will have very very sore toes so keep your toenails short so next we're going to talk first aid starting with plasters plasters and bandages definitely prepare for having blisters I would recommend that you take pain relief paracetamol, ibuprofen, that kind of thing. Next up is alcohol wipes and hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is more a hygiene thing, but the alcohol wipes will clear any cuts or injuries that you have. Aloe vera. I swear by aloe vera. And for me, this was actually a godsend when I got my burns on my hands. Nothing here got rid of the pain of the chillblains and the burns except the aloe vera. It helped with my insect bites and it also just makes you feel a little bit more fresh faced in the morning. Another thing I would highly recommend that you take are rehydration sachets or tablets, powder, whatever form it comes in. I got a black 
blackcurrant flavoured powder. All you do is you tip this into your water, in your bladder or your bottle and drink it as normal. I woke up one morning with a really bad headache, I felt really sick and I thought it might have been altitude sickness or something I'd eaten and I popped a couple of these in my bladder and come midday I felt completely back to normal so I think I was dehydrated without realising that I was dehydrated because I was still drinking quite a lot but you really need to drink a lot more than you realise because you're burning so much energy. Then I have a range of stomach treatments, constipation tablets and diarrhoea tablets. You just don't know what could happen. You've got to prepare yourself. <laughs> Next up is malaria tablets. You will probably be prescribed these in preparation for your trip. Make sure that you take them according to the instructions. The type that we had, we were supposed to take with food. One of the ladies in our group got very, very ill every morning and she thought it was altitude or something else. And it was only actually when we started taking the malaria tablets properly that her sickness went away quite magically. And I've had it before on a previous trip to Ecuador that I got a little bit ill off malaria tablets from taking them before my breakfast rather than with or after. And so definitely, definitely take these as prescribed. Decongestion spray. Highly recommend this. Altitude does funny things to your body and it can definitely make you feel very congested. So at night time, especially when you're trying to sleep, they're not great sleeping conditions anyway. So having a clear nose is definitely beneficial. Next up I have antihistamines. You may not need these. I found that they were helpful with the bites that I got. Um, I also did put bite cream in my bag, which I don't actually have here. But antihistamines also did help. We heard from a few people that when you get to the summit, the cold temperatures can actually make your skin swell a little bit. So we all took an antihistamine before climbing the summit and I think we were all okay. But I found it before when I went on a previous trip to Finland, when it got down to about minus 30, my face swelled up in the cold. So just pre-warning, maybe take some antihistamines. I also took some acid reflux medication. I'm very prone to acid reflux because of some dietary requirements I have, but actually the food that they served us, absolutely brilliant and completely supportive of my dietary requirements and digestion. It was actually the best I felt, even coming from my normal diet back home. This one's more for the ladies. I would suggest maybe taking some caniston or something just in case you get a yeast infection. I mean, it's not a nice thing to talk about, but you're not in the most hygienic of scenarios and it was quite funny because we went as a group of ladies and almost all of us brought a tube of caniston with us just to be safe. <laughs> Don't think anyone needed it in the end. And then finally, these are personal things for me, but just a little reminder, if you're asthmatic and you need inhalers, or if you have any dietary requirements, I have lactose intolerance, so I have lactose tablets. Just remember to pack them as well. I actually didn't need either of these things. I didn't need to use my inhalers, and I also didn't need to use any of my lactose tablets because the meals weren't very dairy heavy, but it, you just don't know. And we're nearing the end now, but next up we have entertainment and I kind of use this term loosely because it kind of covers a wider spectrum than that. First up, I took a book with me, didn't use it at all. I expected that when we would get to our camps we would have time to chill and pass time but actually you don't. You get to your tent, you unpack, you get yourself ready, you go for dinner, you have a little chat and then you go to bed and that's pretty much how your day goes every day. Some people brought a book to help them sleep at night. I actually borrowed someone's book one night because I, I'd just been struggling to sleep for a little while, but I personally didn't have need for a book that was taking up space and adding weight. I also brought a pack of cards for the same reason, thinking that we would have time to spare in the evenings. I think we used them once for about five minutes. <laughs> so honestly, I probably wouldn't recommend taking anything for entertainment purposes. You might use them, but no one in our group did. One thing I did use though is a journal, but that is personal preference. I take my journal on every trip that I go on and I always write about my adventures and how my day has gone and what it included. So I took a little journal with me, a very little 
little one so it's nice and easy to carry and also a pen don't forget a pen if you're planning on doing some writing and last but not least letters from home so I had loved ones write me letters for summit nights and actually it was such a lovely lovely thing by the time you get to summit night you're absolutely done for <laughs> you're feeling quite exhausted and a bit meh and I had zero phone signal for the entirety of the trip so I couldn't speak to any of my loved ones at all or tell them how the trip was going or how I was and I found that quite difficult so having letters from them to read halfway through the trek was really really lovely so I do recommend doing that and you can have them to keep then forever afterwards as well as a little little memory a little souvenir and finally I would like to just talk you through what I traveled there in because for me, I wish someone would have given me this advice before I went, but you live and you learn. So I travelled in a cotton t-shirt, a pair of jeans and my trainers, which I then took up the mountain. Definitely regret wearing these. <laughs> because our luggage got lost, as I mentioned, we were stuck in the clothes that we arrived in. And having to spend a couple of days in 35 degree heat in quite thick jeans, was not fun. <laughs> now we were lucky that our luggage arrived later that evening on a different flight, but had our luggage not arrived in time for us to start our trek up the mountain, we would have had to start the trek wearing the clothes that we arrived in. And climbing up a mountain in jeans would not have been fun. It's 35 degree heat, it's likely humid, you're doing a lot of movement, you're getting very sweaty. So I would not recommend traveling in jeans, I would recommend traveling in leggings or something that you could see yourself hiking in should it come to it. But similarly, this t-shirt was quite thick cotton and it just wasn't breathable or sweat wicking and wasn't fun at all. Um, only good thing was the trainers actually. So I would recommend traveling in your camp trainers or even your hiking boots if you want to but definitely not in jeans and definitely not in a heavy or thick top. So as a recap some final top tips for you before I love you and leave you to get on with your adventure. First top tip make sure that you pack everything that is important to you in your hand luggage so it's with you and safe. If your luggage goes missing, you will have your hand luggage with you. Now I'm not just talking about your hiking gear, I'm talking about medication and whatever else. So I kept with me in my hand luggage my hiking boots, my important medication, some spare underwear, and also my letters from home. Everything else I could hire or I could use someone else's. One of the other ladies in our group was on a contraceptive pill and that was in her main luggage which went missing. So just food for thought. Second top tip, with that whole thing in mind, keep a padlock on your case and a name tag with contact details. Third top tip, dry sacks. It really helped me organise everything and labelling them really, really, really helped me. I knew exactly where things were and even if I had two bags of the same colour, I could look at the labels. You don't want to be emptying your bag and repacking your bag every single night or several times a night. <laughs> And final top tip is make sure you leave space in your duffel bag if you're hiring a sleeping bag. They are huge, I cannot stress enough, bear that in mind, pack wisely. But that is all from me, I hope you've enjoyed watching, I hope you found some help and use in anything that I've said, I've tried to be as in-depth as I possibly can. If you can think of anything else that I've missed or you've done the trip before and you can think of something that you would like to recommend to other people, please comment it below and give others some help and advice, it would be really really appreciated. And if you haven't already then please go and check out my other videos in this series, I'm sure you'll find plenty of other help and advice and tips. I might even answer some of the questions that you have in those other videos. For those of you who are planning to go to Kilimanjaro, good luck with your adventure. I hope this has helped. Have a wonderful time. Lovely to meet you all. See you all again soon. Bye! Kilimanjaro, Akuna Matata.